So I have a great guest here today, Anthony Minicello, ex-professional um, rugby league player for the Roosters here in Sydney. And uh, how are you doing today, mate? I'm good, yeah. Thanks for inviting me in on your podcast, mate. I'm uh, heavily into my health and fitness, so um, yeah, that no, should be a good day. Good, good. Um, yeah, appreciate you coming down, mate, because I know how busy you are, so uh, thanks very much for that. And um, yeah, so how's things going with the um, with the mini fit? Because um, I know you coach the kids and stuff now. So how's that going? Yeah, it's going well. Um, so I've, I retired, you know, f almost four years ago now, and I had mini fit sort of set up towards the end of my career. Um, I always loved working with sort of kids um, when I was like, playing footy and stuff. And um, when we did the, the coaching clinics and the holiday clinics, they were always uh, fun times. So uh, I decided to create my own sort of company called Minifit and that was directed to primary school age children um, and I sort of started it with the idea of getting into the schools because uh, some schools or most schools now don't have um, PE teachers they outsource their physical activity and uh, so I did that and uh, birthday parties and then some holiday clinics as well but uh, now I've been retired and, and doing a, a partnership with uh, Leagues Clubs Australia I've just directed it towards just holiday clinics so uh, take Minifit out to all the, the leagues clubs uh, generally sort of out west where uh, they all are and um, yeah it was a really busy time last couple holidays actually uh, we had one every day so Monday to Friday every day at a different clinic and then uh, the weekend off and then again one uh, every day Monday to Friday again for the second week so it was a big two weeks but uh, good fun. Awesome, awesome. So yeah I'll just jump to this question and whilst we're on the topic of uh, mini fit mate I just wanted to because it's, it's great that you you know, you're doing this kind of thing because I think this day and age, you know, getting kids moving, active, uh, and, and, you know, keeping them involved with fitness and exercise, I think is very important, right? So, um, yeah, how do you think that's, um, that's, what kind of impact do you think that's having on the children? Because, as I say, with technology and stuff, trying to get them away from their tablets and smartphones and stuff nowadays, you know, I think it's just great that, you know, you're doing some of this. Yeah, it's, it's pretty important. I think, um, you know, from when I grew up, I grew up in five acres actually, so I was always outdoors, riding bikes, motorbikes, uh, running around, so keeping a, a very active lifestyle. I played a lot of different sports, uh, but this day and age, there's probably um, there's two things that um, are probably detrimental to our kids, and, and one of those is technology, which you just mentioned, and the tablets and the iPhones and all that type of stuff, trying to uh, get them off that to uh, re-engage with other kids and get out and uh, be active and play different sports and, and just run around in the backyard, I suppose. And then the other thing is, um, you know, nutrition and, you know, the, you look around and, you know, there's the refined carbohydrates and sugars uh, that are so easily accessible these days um, can have a, uh, a bad effect on uh, the way they grow up and the way they, um, or I suppose their long-term health. And that's pretty important. So. Now, at Minifit, we, we talk about uh, getting active and, and having fun, and, and obviously it's it's heavily rugby league based as well. Uh, but we do um, uh, fitness and, and all that type of stuff as well. But then we talk about you know eating whole fresh food and uh, eating your, your good quality protein, your fruit and vegetables, and uh, trying to cut out all the uh, processed stuff and uh, soft drinks and all that. So it's um, it's a pretty good program, and we've, we've reached a huge number of kids. You know, in the last couple of holidays, you know, almost two hundred kids every day so you're getting up in the thousands there so wow. hopefully we're making a difference. That's awesome man. Mm. Yeah actually I, I found out about you through um, Saula, uh, Saula Campbell or Saula, Saula Chamberlain. Saula yeah yeah Saula, that's right. Saula, sorry, yeah. Right. It's Chamberlain the surname sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's, Chamberlain. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right yeah and she because um, I, I know she said she was doing the nutrition uh, for the Roosters the team used to play for for a while and I'm glad you touched upon the point there because I always, I always stress this to people how important it is to steer clear or at least reduce the amount of like pro-inflammatory food you have like because we don't realize people are not really mindful enough to know like you know the vegetable oils like even canola oil sunflower all those things that you find terrible. are pretty much terrible <laughs> uh, combined with the refined sugars and it's really doing some damage to people's gut and then what else and, and people gain weight and whatnot and i think the kids i mean it's so it's how how do you i was, was going to ask you is how do you kind of um what is it you educate them about and how do you get your message across with the whole food approach because they're constantly bombarded with yeah it's it's um with, with obviously kids, you've you got to keep it pretty basic. Um, yeah, of course. So we, we, we give them a booklet um, at the end of the, the session along with a, a hat as well. But in the booklet, it, it talks about exercise, talks about nutrition, talks about hydration, talks about sleep. 
Um, so if you get those three things uh, on the right track, then you know, grow up healthy and strong. And that's part of the booklet, you know, growing up healthy and strong. I asked the kids um, about nutrition, about whole fresh food, what does that mean to you? What, what are the, some, some types of protein? What are the vegetables that you like? So we just get the, the kids, the, the conversation going with the kids and just get them to ask questions. And I, I ask them about, you know, what happens if we drink soft drink every day? Or what happens if we ate bad food every day? And, and most kids put their hand up and say, look, we'll, we'll get sick, we'll get a disease. Or even people say, we'll get type 2 diabetes, which is um, on the cards. Uh, so the kids, kids are generally, they, they're pretty smart, mm. but, because it's so, it's everywhere, all these foods are everywhere, um, and it's easy to access them at any time, at any point in the day, um, it's just convenient. So, um, but trying to educate the kids that uh, eating real food uh, matters for, the, for their body and their long-term health is pretty important. And then, you know, the booklet has tips, tips and hints about, uh, for the parents as well. So, uh, keeping that quite general and, um, but yeah, look, I, I've, gone into the health and fitness um, area quite a lot deeper than that because I've, I've had my own experiences with my, my injuries as well so yeah, it's mm. something that I love. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's great. So I'm glad you uh, touched upon that. I was going to go into something then about just one quick thing about kids and you saying they're smart. They're a lot smarter than what people think, aren't they? So I was just, yeah. just going to quickly ask you, like with York, because I know you've got kids of your own, right? Yep. Like how do you, yeah, and how do you manage it? Because obviously they, they basically pretty much mimic what you do, right? So yep. um, I guess you eat a lot of healthy foods and stuff. And I know obviously you can't keep, they've got to have a life, they go to parties and they have, yep. but how do you, how do you uh, apply the principles you teach the kids to your kids? Well, at home, I'm pretty meticulous with uh, Azura, my daughter, who's four and a half. Um, so all our food is from the best sourced food. So if I'm getting protein, it's all pasture raised protein at home. Um, organic fruit and vegetables. Uh, we do a lot of bone broths, uh, which uh, Azura loves. Um, a lot of slow cooks, and I, and I get it, get her involved in the cooking process. So um, she sees that you know, making something, she gets excited about it. So when it comes out of the oven or it comes out of the, the pan, then um, you know, she's put some effort into making it. So that that all that helps. Um, she'll she'll go with in and out of phases with vegetables and and meat and and whatnot and. But um, I know that she's got a strong foundation at home because she, she basically has bone broth most days. Um, good quality protein at night with vegetables and, and fruit. Uh, and then when, as you mentioned before, kids parties, when, when we're out at a party, then yeah, look, be a kid, go and enjoy yourself. Um, try and limit it a little bit. I try and limit it a little bit, but I let her be a kid and enjoy the cake and stuff like that. But when, when she's at home, I know she's got a strong foundation, so, mm. which is pretty important. Great stuff. Yeah, going into your rugby career now, your footy career even, rugby league. Um, I looked at your stats and pretty pretty impressive mate. In terms of uh, the Sydney Roosters, the top, which are, by the way, folks, they're like a top level um, rugby league team here in Sydney. Um, do you still hold the record for the most caps? Or I do, yeah, 302 yeah. games. 302 yeah. games, yeah. jeez. So, playing at that level and actually um, that amount of games for that long, you know, because what period was that, was that over? How many years? So I started in 2000, I was 19, yep. and then retired at uh, 2014, and I was 34. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a big stretch of your time <laughs> there, mate. Good work. But um, no, I was just going to ask you, how the hell did you structure your life, like your personal life and everything else around your career as a, a top level elite rugby player? So I'll give you a, a basic rundown of my career. So I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I grew up on five acres, so uh, being active was a huge part of my life. And then I'm from an Italian uh, background, so uh, both parents are Italian uh, heritage, and um, their uh, well, their Italian philosophy is to grow your own, cook your own. So we had our own cows, our own chickens, our own eggs, vegetable patches, fruit trees, all in the backyard. And my mum's a pretty good cook, uh, so you know we used to get a local butcher over once a year and and chop up the cow and throw the meat in the freezer, and it's all pasture raised um, as nature intended it. So you now we get the benefits of all that and. And my brother still playing now professionally. My, my um, sister played high level netball and is now a physio. So we're all involved in sport, but we had a, a great foundation of um, nutrition. Um, we were not knowing about it just by living off the land, basically. Uh, and then I signed with the Roosters at 16 and moved at home at 18. Um, but made my debut in, in uh, 2000, as I mentioned, at 19. But I didn't get injured for the first six years of my career, not one injury. So I played the most amount of games at anyone in the NRL. 
and then basically I was uh, out every weekend drinking, partying, as you do, as there's a bit of a, a, a huge drinking culture back in the early 2000s. Um, eating out every night because I was living with the boys in the east. Um, so things started to, to deteriorate quite slowly, um, but not through injuries, it was through uh, a back injury. So um, obviously my discs started to dry up and get de degenerative a little bit and I was still playing good football and people would say, you've got to look after your back, you've got two bulging discs down in your lumbar spine. Uh, but you know, I was uh, you know winning these awards. We won a grand final already, so I was just taking things for granted. It wasn't really listening. And then the preseason of '06, um, just in a normal training drill, just got a, got checked and had this massive nerve pain down my left leg. So my disc had ruptured. Um, so I had to get it, go in and get an operation, uh, a laminectomy on my lumbar spine. Uh, took the rest of the year off. Uh, and then the following year I come back in 07 and the disc above does the same thing. So I go back in, get that operated on, uh, take the rest of the year off. Uh, 2008 rolls around, I play the first 10 games uh, and then I get a pretty significant disc bulge in my neck, um, one millimeter away from the spinal cord. Um, I rehab that and I play at the end of the year. Uh, but I'm, I'm, at the time I'm thinking, you know, what the hell's going on with my spine? You know, I'm seeing surgeons, seeing uh, everyone to try and find out what um, I could do to come back and play some good footy. Um, and basically they were telling me at the time that all my discs were dehydrated. Uh, you can't, you shouldn't play on really. You should give up this career and find something else that's non-contact, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then I, I found a, um, a guy that was, 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 that believed in me and said, you, you know, you can, improve, you can get better if you're willing to put in the hard work and, and time and change a few lifestyle aspects. So I was pretty invested in that straight away. And I started working with him um, uh, quite heavily. And the following year, 2009 season rolls around and I do all my ligaments from my ankle and do a fracture, uh, my fibula under my knee. So I'm out again for four years running. Um, and I was coming off contract at the time and I went back to Aaron McKenzie and I went, mate, I'm injured again. He goes, you know what, you can actually, this is actually going to be good for you. You can take your time to build a stronger foundation through your spine uh, without having the um, play week to week contact and try and get up for every game. Um, so, you know, Aaron and I worked together at his fitness studio, Origin of Energy. And basically we were, he was talking to me mostly about nutrition and what it, what it plays uh, the role it plays in uh, recovery, uh, your long-term health, and then I then I thought, um, basically, this is how I used to eat when I was a kid. You know, uh, mm. eating more natural fats, lower carbohydrate spectrum, cutting out the refined carbs and sugars, um, good quality protein, um, you know, the good quality oils, uh, getting rid of all the uh, vegetable oils and industrial seed oils that. Uh, create havoc in the body and the arteries, artery walls, and um, I just jumped on it. I was 100% invested in it, and I just seen a transformation within myself straight away. You know, I had some gut issues as well, I had ulcers developing, and um, so it wasn't just injuries. It was starting to get health issues, and I was only in my 20s still. So I, I seen all that transform and fade away just through nutrition. So that was um, pretty eye-opening to me so I, I was heavily invested in that and now I am uh, still to this day um, where uh, we talk about a little bit of mini fit but we've got some other programs and some other keynote stuff that I do that I talk about nutrition you know and I give them four steps you know the source of your food is step one the importance of that uh, step two is the process of it how you cook it and, and what oils you cook with and step three is the, you know, eliminating the, the bad stuff that's in a ruin um, performance and uh, keep the sick for longer and then step four is the uh, the intermittent fasting and, and the role that plays on on long-term health as well so um, yeah I'm, I, this is the, the space I, I, I love and, and learn about every day hmm. oh, mate, I mate so many questions coming to mind now, <laughs> but I'll just uh, go into because nutrition is is you know something I'm really fascinated about and learning a lot about um, and yeah, I was just gonna say about like intermittent fasting, that's something I do on a daily basis as well. And it's just like, I keep kind of, on a lot of my podcast episodes, I'm 
come across and I end up with the same message, you know, when it comes to nutrition, it's like, um, you know, obviously most people overeat, like we said, refined carbohydrates, yeah. refined sugars, which you'll find in, you know, um, yeah. white breads and yeah. white passes and, and then not to mention all the rest of the stuff that comes out of packets. But um, if you could just give us a quick heads up, intermittent fasting, do you do that at the moment yourself? And um, do you, like, what kind of foods do you eat now? Do you eat a, uh, quite a high fat diet with low carbohydrates generally? Um, you know, how do you work it right now? And if you could, mate, when, when, you, when you were actually at your top level of training as well, if you can remember, for example, on a day you trade, on a day you play, big game, what kind of carbs, or, I don't know, anything yeah. you've got, mate. Yeah, so yeah, this is, um, yeah, there's a couple of questions in that. I'll, I'll start yeah. with, yeah, I, I practice, I mean, I practice I'll, I'll, we'll start with the fasting. Uh, I practice intermittent fasting every day, so I, I haven't eaten yet today. Um, so I've gone almost 16 hours without food. Um, and, you know, when you, if you tell everyone this, the, the conventional nutritionists are like, what are you doing? You, you start, you're starving yourself. Mm. But the, the science um, backs the fasting up. Also, fasting's been around for hundreds of years. Every culture, every religion has done it. It's just been lost and now it's come um, back into fashion a little bit now. But the benefits from fasting and not eating, the body can turn its attention to uh, cellular repair, uh, regeneration of the body, um, raising your own stem cell production and, and hormone levels to uh, fix old injuries and um, even gene expression. Gene, yeah, gene expression. It's like, all, all, it, it's, it, the science behind it all and the, the stuff that's coming out with the benefits of fasting is, is amazing. Um, you know, you know, the body goes for more than 14 to 16 hours or more in a fast, and the body will induce autophagy. Mm -hmm. That's um, cellular cleansing or self eating. So you know, you've got. Um, hyperactive white blood cells maybe that gets eaten up by autophagy. Um, and, and I've had ex experience myself with uh, a piece of disc break, breaking off in my lower back two years ago. And I got an MRI and uh, my club doctor said, look, you need that taken out. Uh, it's a one centimetre diameter piece. Um, and I said, well, you know, I'm gonna try and let the body break it down naturally itself. And he goes, well, you know, good luck with that. We'll see how it goes. And anyway, I gave it a year and I MRI'd again. I was, I was heavily into the fasting thing then. Uh, and I got an MRI again and uh, that, that one centimetre piece had disappeared. So the body had broke it down and metabolised it uh, through fasting. So it's incredible, absolutely it's incredible. It's unbelievable, yeah. And then, and, 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 like, you know, the, the, the benefits from just staying mentally sharp and mentally focused is, is incredible. You know, like, the longer I go into fast, I feel um, much more focused. Mm. And, um, more energy uh, the longer I go, and, you know, and, that, and that, look, I love food too. So it's, uh, it's not You're Italian, you've got yeah, hundred percent. So <laughs> like you know, when I eat, I eat, you know, I eat it's same, good, same. I, eat, I eat well. It's a bit of feasting, I call it. Yeah, it's like yeah. big meals, man. You know, it's great. The, the, yeah, the feast sort of fast thing is um, is perfect. You know, when I feast, I feast, I eat. You know what mm. I mean? And when I fast, I, I fast because I know the benefits. Mm. Uh, that's going to give me. And, well, when you do, if you size into it, mate, yeah. it's, it's whole foods. Like a lot of people think is, I, I like to mention to a lot to a lot of people about intermittent fasting because I do it all my time, all the time. But um, in terms of actually building a health, healthy relationship with food and eating the right foods, obviously that's number one. Um, so when you do break your fast, obviously, for example, today, I don't know what would you have like lots of vegetables. Like give us an example. Um, so today I might, uh, I might, I probably might duck into Sula's after this and get a mm. takeaway. Um, slow cooked uh, meal, I think she's got lamb shoulder, slow cooked lamb shoulder um, with some, some root vegetables. Um, so like with the, um, the diet sort of thing too, with like, you know, I've, I've done keto pretty strictly, uh, paleo, um, you know, the intermittent fasting thing. I, I like to um, keep the diet variation there, so I'm not staying on one uh, specific diet all mm. the time. So mm. I think the body adapts to that Absolutely. and gets yeah. resistant. And then obviously you'll, you'll, you'll plateau after a certain amount of time. Uh, all, the, all the research in the podcast that I've listened to is uh, diet variation is pretty important. Um, uh, from say if you're a vegetarian to the keto to um, paleo to um, uh, just you know, normal. So um, I think variation is, is key as well. Um, but you know, for me, I, I, I love I love slow cooked meals. You know, like cooking things overnight in my slow cooker, like a lamb shoulder or a lamb shank or um, the ossal book or the shin of the animal, like all the connective tissue muscles of, of the animals, which offers much more nutrition for us to benefit from. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, and, and that's, you know, in the talks that I do as well, people say, oh, you 
you know, buying organic grass-fed meat, so much more expensive. Um, but I say, well, you know, you've got to get to know your local butcher or local farmer because um, you buy the buy the cheaper cuts. You don't buy the, the T-bone or the eye fillet and all that type of stuff. They're the ones that are charged through the roof. Buy the you know, the lamb shank or the lamb riblets or something that are much cheaper, the much tougher cut. But when, when you cook them long and slow, they offer us more nutrition anyway. And when you're eating a more natural fat, whole food diet, uh, you, you don't need to eat every two hours because you're not hungry, your exactly. blood sugar is stable. So um, basically in the long run, you're, you're spending less anyway. And if you practice intermittent fasting as well, um, it's even more of a saving. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's interesting when you, you, you sink your teeth into this stuff. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And uh, just all the different benefits, as you said then, yeah, I, I could go on forever, but like you said, it was just blew my mind then when you were saying about your injury, because that just that just goes to show a guy at your level has actually just said that on a podcast. You know that that was um, one of the big driving mm. uh, benefits behind your recovery was yeah. the was the fasting, right? It's well, hundred percent. You know, and I wish I was into the fasting. I knew about the fasting thing when I was playing mm. because I would have tested it out where I would have maybe played in a little bit of a fast state, not mm. not not too long, but a little bit of a fast state where my mind and Mm. Uh, my mental clarity is really clear. You know, I would have mm. been, it would have been interested to, to play a game and, and feel the the difference of energy or, or clarity. Um, so, yeah, no, it's 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 um it's an interesting space. Um, you know, and, and also I didn't mention before that you know I MRI'd my back again when I retired, and as I mentioned before, all my discs were black in 2007 when I had that initial MRI and that doctor said, you know, look, basically find a new career. Um, Ruptured discs, right? Two, yeah, I well, had I had two discs already operated on. I had another small disc bulge in my T11, in my thoracic, and I had a significant disc bulge in my C5, C6, um, in my neck. So, and then he, he, we just went MRI my whole back and all the discs were black. And he said, look, basically you've got to find a new sport. Uh, all these discs are degenerative, they should be white and they're black. Um, yeah, so we walked out of the meeting pretty dire, and that's when I ended up meeting Aaron. And, and then when I MRI my back uh, in 2014, when I retired, uh, all my discs are white again, except the ones that were operated on naturally. Um, they've been damaged, but uh, all the rest are white again. And you know, no doctor was was telling me that that could happen. And that's all through nutrition. So you know, I'm I'm you know no doctor, no nutritionist, but I've I've lived the the standard Australian diet, I, I, I know where that got me. <laughs> it got me injuries and health problems. That's exactly uh, right. So eating a more natural fat, healthy fat diet with good quality protein, good quality vegetables, um, and, and practicing the intermittent fasting as well. Um, it, it, I, I've just seen that the benefits, you know, and the benefits are there on scans, on, you know, on, you know I've, I've blood tested myself, I've done all the tests, and my, my results are better now than when I was actually playing professional sport. Mm, insane, insane. Mm. But yeah, like you were just saying about rotating foods then and uh, the importance of actually not staying, sticking to one thing yeah. when it comes to your food. And like that's something, because I, I get gut issues a lot myself and just much like yourself actually, it's probably primarily from uh, eating a UK diet <laughs> back, yeah. back in the day and you know, obviously yeah. the other factors come into it as well and, yeah, yeah. and whatnot. But yeah, since, um, but I still get gut issues now and it just hit the nail on the head then. I need to dip into like, I haven't fully done keto, keto yet, the, the low carb thing. Yep. And how, how did you find that? Just, um, and just quickly explain to people what keto is, if you don't mind. Yeah, the, the ketogenic diet is, um, so you're in a state of nutritional ketosis. So if you've got a, a, blood, a blood glucose meter, um, and you can, you can get these from the chemist, uh, which I've got, and you can test your blood sugar, and you can test uh, your blood ketone level as well. Uh, so if you're, 0.5 and above, that means you're in nutritional ketosis. And when you're in ketosis, that means the liver's producing ketones, uh, which is another fuel source for our brain and our bodies. So the body runs on two systems, glucose and, and ketones. Um, so when glycogen runs out or glucose runs out, the body will switch from burning glucose, which is carbohydrates, to burning fat as fuel. And that's a more of a premium fuel source for us, much more cleaner fuel source. Um, so if you're eating keto, that means you're on a more healthy, high fat diet, moderate protein and really low carbohydrates, um, more above ground vegetables that um, don't give you a spike in blood sugar. Uh, and then that means the body will start producing uh, ketones 
and you're burning fat as fuel. So uh, the, these stores are harder to access, um, but when you when you do access them, uh, you will you feel pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, just the mental clarity around it all, uh, and then. Um, but the thing is, like people that that are full keto, keto, they they advocates of it. Um, I don't think you can stay in that ketogenic diet mm. for too long. Very restrictive. Yeah, it? it's very. It is very restrictive. Um, but then you know the body, uh, as we mentioned earlier, will adapt and, and get resistant to it. So cycling in and out of that, practicing the, the fasting, letting the body recover and repair and regenerate, um, is pretty important. And then. Uh, you know, if you do have a birthday on or you have a special occasion or it's Christmas or Easter, you know, feast, feast on whatever you want, but you know you've got the tools to uh, recover and, and repair um, when you get back into the, the good whole natural food and, and fasting. Awesome. Thanks, man. I'm going to cut the nutrition part off there because we'll just talk the whole, yeah, set, no, the whole no, thing no, about me too. <laughs> <laughs> All good. No, mate, your knowledge has blown me away on nutrition. It's, it's great to hear. Um, I was just going to ask you about your career. What was your, um, what would you say was the uh, like peak of your career? And um, also like, basically, what was the best part about being like a top level athlete? And what would you say was the peak of your career? Oh, well, the, being a top level athlete is, um, it's pretty amazing if you think about it. Like you, you go into work, go into training every day with 25 of your best mates and you're just hanging out with your mates and you train and you have these really high ups and downs. You know, professional sport is. Um, you have the the adrenaline rushes that you get, and big games that you do win is is something special. It's hard to describe when you're walking down a tunnel and it's a big grand final. You're walking out to eighty thousand fans, or you're playing an Origin game or, or for Australia, um, and that feeling as you just before you walk out, and you know you got butterflies, you have the excitement and the fear as well. All, all that is just mixed in. Um, and then when you do actually win a grand final, win certain big games, the, the highs are pretty unmatched uh, in life and, and you, you do that with 17 other blokes so you're always connected with them for the rest of your life. Um, so that's, that's the benefits of sport and what it gives um, the players and, and, and gives the fans as well, you know, fans love to see their team win. Um, and then, oh, look, my highlight, I've had plenty of highlights. So, so the first five years of my career, six years of my career when I didn't get injured, I was winning some great awards, you know, the Golden Boot Award and, and all that type of stuff and Wally Lewis medal. But uh, the 2002 Premiership was a definitely a highlight. But then going and having those down periods where I was injured for four years, um, that, uh, looking back at it now, that was, that was, I could say that was a highlight because I got educated about things. You know, and, and I wouldn't be sitting here speaking to you if I didn't get injured that day. I 100% believe that. And then uh, coming through that in the first full season since I was, in, I was injured at 26, but the first full season I played was when I was 30 again. And I played the next five years without any injury. And I got the captain of my club and win the premiership in 2013 uh, with my wife beside me. And she was pregnant at the time too. So you know, 2013 was probably the highlight year of my career. And that was towards the end of my career. Mm. And it's interesting you say that because I bet at the time when you were injured, and I bet it was really frustrating because obviously yeah. you've gone from that. That Golden Boot Award, by the way, that's like uh, essentially International Player of the Year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, they, they give it out once a year and it's for the best player in the world for, in, in all competitions. So, um, yeah, that was, a, that was a huge honour at the time. Uh, then the following year, that's when the injuries hit, you know. So, yeah. But looking back at it, it's, um, it was a huge learning curve that uh, needed to happen. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And what was the, um, go, go, uh, another one about your career, what would you say was the, um, like what challenges did you face um, and setbacks and stuff? And, you know, it must be a bit of a roller coaster when you reach the top, right? So you got to the top of the mountain and you know, you're, you're at your peak. What were the, the biggest challenges you faced then in terms of the psychological side of it? And you know, keeping yourself mentally well enough to keep performing at, at that level. Yeah, the the challenges you face when you're sort of at the top of your game. So I was at the top of my game in 2003, 2004, 2005. I was young. I was 23, 24, 25. So um, keeping uh, keeping grounded, I suppose, and and not taking things for granted. You know, like, like at the time I was living with in a house of Bondi with four other guys, and you know, we were partying heaps and. You know, it was, the, the, yeah, it was great times. So yeah, yeah. you know, I wouldn't change it because that's led me to 
where I am today. Um, but if I knew some of the knowledge I knew now, just back then, yeah. um, you know, you would have, would have applied the nutrition stuff back then and, and really seen how much heights are, you could have gone to, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. that's that's all life and part of learning. So, you know, I don't regret anything. We, um, we did some silly things, but great memories, you know. Like, yeah, you know, we get together with those boys and we just talk about the house where we live. We call, we call it the house of grouse. And good times. Was, yeah, it was good times, but... Um, yeah, good fun. Yeah, you need that. You need that feedback. Yeah, 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 you need it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I was just going to say then, because obviously the good times um, and the party and all that kind of stuff and uh, enjoying yourself, you must have had to keep. Um, on another note, you must have had to keep like um, a good uh, like support network network of people around you. And would you say like so like the, the, the lads you live with then, the three of the lads you said right, and uh, so your support network and the people around you. Um, that obviously must be um, essential to oh, it is, where you yeah, work. It's, it's definitely essential to surround yourself with good people, positive people that are going to help you along the way. Mm. And obviously, my parents are first and foremost. You know, they, they, um, my dad worked his butt off to give uh, us kids the opportunity to play whatever sport we wanted. We played a lot of sports. My mum filmed every game, took us everywhere. So they're our biggest supporters. Uh, and then when you know when we we're playing first at the Roosters, and uh, you know we had we had a great. Great gang, you know, like we had Brett Finch, we had uh, Michael Crocker, Luke Rickardson, Brad Fittler, all these guys that are, um, we're all best mates now still. Um, but they, these guys were just, we were just positive about everything. You know, we would come to training and sometimes you'd be a little bit hungover from Sunday night and like we, it would be fitness, but we would be leading the way and, and no one would be whinging, no one would be um, complaining about what we had on that day. We just we just took care of it, you know, mm -hmm. and that we, that that was the, the culture in the team at the time, and uh, those guys are all still my best mates now. That's amazing. It's good you're showing it because you build that, that unit of people, and mm -hmm. obviously, like you said, you literally you didn't say this, but you literally go into war, right? So like, yeah, man, I, I, you watch it on the TV, and like you know, it's funny because people are like, oh, why do you do this? Why do, you do that? And I just look, and I'm just like, you know, I'm in awe just to get at that level alone, uh, let alone to you know to, to maintain it for the amount of time you did. So. You literally go to war with these people, right? So I bet, like, that's another thing. Which yeah, well, that's the thing. That's you know the the camaraderie and and you know it's hard to explain when you go into a big game because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't, you know, someone might try and take your head off. There might be a fight. There might be uh, someone rush out of line to try and bash you, or you, you might drop a high ball. You might drop a, or you might score. Or you might uh, do a big tackle or score the winning try. So you, you don't know what's going to happen. So that unpredictability. Um, is is just the round of a change room before, but the way you sort of make everyone comfortable is you connect with your teammates, um, you reiterate the game plan and all that type of stuff. And, and when it all comes together and then you win that big game, you, you, you've just looked the 17 guys in the eye and, and you've just come through a massive game that you've just won, a grand final or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, you, you, you're connected for life from because from, that feeling is, is um, certainly hard to replicate in general work or general life. You know, it's the, the highs are pretty high. Absolutely, and glad you finished off with that. Because the next question was, how did you manage to, you know, do the transition from being? How was the transition from, you know, being an elite rugby player to, um, you know, running a business and going back, if you like, in a sense, to like a normal life and then. You know, building your business from scratch. How do you find that transition in general, not just business, just yeah, personal yeah. living? Look, I, I think most athletes find it really hard um, because of the heights that I just mentioned and, mm -hmm. and what you go through as a team and as a unit and all that type of stuff. Uh, but for me in 2014, uh, the year prior, end of 13, I had my daughter Azura. Um, I found it really hard to get into the pre-season, wanted to be home a little bit more, but I was sort of mentally done. I, I, I The year before, I, I still was gun ho and I'd play and I'd play. Played 14 and I knew at the start of the year that shit, this could be my last year, you know, because I was mentally fatigued, I was mentally done and starting to check out. And when that happens, I think, in any professional sport, you can't be at your top of your game. So, you know, I focused really hard on 14 to finish the year off um, strong and you know, I did that and then I just knew, you know, that this was the time. So, but the thing was, the transition took a couple of years in the planning too, you know, like from organising um, a role for Roosters still and, and uh, positioning Minifit to get a little bit busier, um, uh, doing some stuff with the NRL community team and 
And I was pretty lucky because I had a lot of connections built up because I stayed at the club for 18 years. So I was pretty much luckier than most. If someone, some of my mates chopped and changed um, different clubs and when they retired, they, they, they found it really hard. And some of them are still struggling now to try to find their way and their, their passion, you know, and find a new purpose. Um, but my, you know, my new purpose was this space, health and fitness, because I've learned so much uh, from my injuries and um, this was something that I wanted to direct my life into, you know, so um, that's, that's something that uh, was a, a new focus of mine and that's what I, I dived into that, uh, dived into mini fit and then I was still, I'm still connected with the club, so I'm still, um, I'm still around rugby league, so it's been a, a smoother transition there. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, literally, a couple more questions. Um, that was that was great, man. Thanks a lot for that. Um, pretty much covered my next two almost there, so that's great. Yeah. <laughs> You're on fire, mate. The, uh, no, I was just going to say, like, mental health. I'm uh, really trying to um, spread the message out there. Yeah. Because I had some issues when I was younger in terms of you know some like mental health issues, and I had I've had like two guys on this podcast who've got their own mental uh, health awareness groups. Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, it's it's become a bit of a almost like an epidemic now. The yeah. amount of people that are suffering with mental health ailments and uh, I think it's the stats are like uh, one in five people. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Mm. So, um, yeah, how, how is it, how do you like, um, is there anything, tools you have in place in terms of like managing your own uh, mental health and like, um, do you see, are you actually um, seeing this as an issue yourself? Are you noticing that, you know, obviously the deterioration of certain people and whatnot with their mind? Or? That's a huge, huge issue. issue. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Um, that's um, more and more people uh, you find every day that uh, they're saying, yeah, now I've got a few issues, I've got a few mental health issues, I need help. But um, what I look at it is the, the way you um, run your lifestyle. You know, if you're getting quality sleep every night, seven to eight hours, um, you know, for me, I, I wake up and um, obviously brush my teeth, but then I have a, a big glass of water with a pinch of salt in it. And then I try and get some natural sunlight or do some nice breathing. Uh, and then I, and I, and I train, I'll do some exercise. Um, and, and then I, I've started my day, you know, and I head to work and uh, then I have good food at lunch and I have good food at dinner, you know, like um, cutting the whole lifestyle aspect comes into it with you know, what you eat, cutting out the inflammation with refined carbohydrates and sugar, um, getting good quality sleep, uh, hydration. Um, you know, getting natural sunlight instead of all the blue light and technology light that we get, all the fake light. Um, so everything is, I, I believe, everything is connected. Definitely. You know I mean? so and relationships. Sorry to interrupt there. Relationships, and relationships, social connections. Yeah, really social connection is huge. Yeah. You know? So, um, you know, finding someone that is uh, in the same sort of area or space as you, and then and training with those guys, or creating a, a good community base around that, and um, communicating with your loved ones as well as is important so well, yeah, everything is connected so if you're doing little things right uh, from nutrition hydration sleep community uh, family um, natural sunlight all that type of stuff that that has a, an effect on our well-being mm -hmm. mentally there's no doubt about that absolutely so I think um, you know if we can um, people can change certain things in, in, in all those areas then hopefully they can find a way to, to feeling much better Mm, absolutely, because it's an interesting time we live in, right? Because we didn't evolve this way, did we, with all this technology? No. Like you said, like sunlight, being out, you know, mm. being outdoors and getting that sunlight. People just don't really um, think about these things, and you're, just, you're, you're straight away you're exposed to like artificial light as soon as you wake up, right? So yeah, that's that's great for you because I, I have a little routine myself. You know, I get up in the morning, do some breathing. Yeah. Uh, generally, I was doing some yoga moves as well, but that's uh, uh, that, that stopped. But yeah, just getting some daylight, and I, I do the same thing with the water as well. Uh, I, I had, had the pink Himalayan salt, yep. and then just some lemon. Yep. Just like simple things like that, because people straight away are banging coffees down, right? Well, that's and the thing, well, you, you wake up in mild dehydration anyway, because Absolutely. you haven't had a drink in seven or eight hours, nine mm. hours, whatever, whatever long you sleep. And um, then they, they go straight into the coffee, you know? Mm. And um, no, I don't think coffee's a bad thing. You can use it as a tool throughout mm. life as well, but um, you know, people are having five, six coffees a day, you yeah, know, exactly. and that's just it's slowly dehydrating them. And stuff. Definitely. And then they're hardly drinking water. That's so, right. Yeah. Th th and this is the, it's a compound effect. You know, they're doing that day in, day out. That's right. Week in, week out. Month in, month out. Exactly. And then on top of a standard Australian diet, um, on top of maybe even five, six hours sleep, mm -hmm. which people are getting less sleep these days as well, on average, um, something's going to 
something's got to give. The body, so the body give, yeah. can't handle that much stress um, and before something's going to give way. And, and, and everyone is different. One person might be mental health, like we just talked about. It could be uh, autoimmune, someone else, or mm-hmm. type two diabetes, and someone else. It's every, everyone's genetic makeup is different. Um, but uh, it's the stresses they put on their body every day that they've got to sort of look at and adjust and uh, to mm. have long-term health, I suppose. Thanks, man. I'm glad you, you covered the fundamental things and the big rocks, you know, sleep, mm. exercise, moving, nutrition. These things are just the most, like people always get sucked into like the supplements and uh, yeah. all the stuff which doesn't really make any difference nah. if you're not doing <laughs> the other things. So yeah. that's, that's great, man. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to, f- might throw you a bit with this one, but um, do you have like a favorite quote or saying um, which you like, you would choose to, if you had to get a message across to people? Um, it, it can be anything, oh, look, I, be yeah, I, I, I just like the quote, treat others the way you want to be treated, you know what I mean? Uh, that just stick, that's coming to mind straight away. Um, that's, you know, not anything to do with health and fitness, but um, that's one that's always, always there for me, you know, treat others the way you would like to be treated yourself. Yep, awesome. That's great, man. Thanks a lot for your time. And um, where can the uh, listeners find you? Um, yeah, so my Instagram is um, minicello 1 um, You can uh, look me up on uh, progression.io as well and minifit.com.au. Awesome. Thanks very much for your time, mate. Beautiful. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, buddy.